This is going to be your guide for capturing legendary Pokemon and Ultra Beasts in Pokemon Sun and Moon. So our adventure begins on Route 8. And what we want to do is go inside the Pokemon Center and start buying as many Quick Balls as possible. The thing is, Quick Balls are just insanely useful that even if you don't use them all up in this little method right here that you're always going to be finding wild pokemon and at least giving the attempt on the quick ball quick balls have actually been buffed in the seventh generation from four times capture rate to five times on that first turn so you can't really go wrong by just throwing out quick balls and while you can just go and use a quick ball in legendary pokemon that will not be the purpose for these quick balls but it, there's no better feeling than just like turn one quick ball oh i suddenly got a legendary off of just insane luck like that feels so good but with these quick balls we are going to go and head on over to how Elise city into the shopping district into the grass and we are going to look for wild abras that we all know abra can be a very 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 frustrating pokemon to try to capture and especially if you don't have quick balls you're pretty much screwed but at least with the quick balls it's going to make it to where you will capture abra every time. The Abra, Abra has like a capture rate of like 25 or 26 percent. So now with the quick ball buff, we're just going to be able to capture Ab Abras on that first turn and then we can go and load up with it. The reason why we want to do this is we need a synchronized Pokemon and Abra can have the synchronized ability. So what the synchronized ability does is it makes Twer a 50 percent chance of the opposing wild Pokemon having the same nature as you, which is why we need to buy a ton of quick balls. You could get inner focus Abras, which just aren't going to work. You also get the wrong natures. You can get duplicate natures. So it can be a little tricky right there, but pretty much just go and spend some time and farm up a lot of Abros, or just keep an eye on the specific abilities that you want. Now what you can do is look up guides of the Pokemon that you are going for. I have a lot of Ultra Beast guides, not all of them just yet, so you can either use my guides that you can find on my channel, or you can just kind of go around the internet, Google it, and see which Pokemon are going to work best. Now when you have the target Pokemon that you want to capture, just make sure you line it up with an Abra. So for example, Ultra Beast 2 Beauty, now known as Pheromosa. Pheromosa is very fast, but you really want it to have an adamant nature, so go get an adamant synchronized Abra, and then you'll just have to have that Pokemon first in your party. Also, synchronized Pokemon can be fainted and still apply the effect, so it's not like you're just trying to battle with a level 7 Abra that's going to get one shot immediately. It can already be fainted, and then it will still have a chance to apply with that synchronize and then you can go and set up your battle another way so it's just going to be a lot of just planning like that that you can mo for the most part tell with different pokemon like uh with celesteela you can do one of two options you can go for like careful crazy kind of tank pokemon right there or you can run the adamant nature some pokemon are going to want to be timid or jolly so just think about the main abilities some abilities are going to be very rarely used but for the most part, you can find some that are almost always going to be used. Like, you have a quiet nature, you have a brave nature. This is going to help you set up for trick room stuff. You can also have careful, calm, impish, modest, adamant. So, depending on the Pokemon you're looking for, just try to get the Abras then. Or you can get them all at this one time, and then you won't have to worry about Abras for a while. Because they can also be used in breeding. I'll be making a breeding guide soon. So, pretty much, you can also catch Dittos with the Synchronize ability. But right now, we're focusing on Legendary Pokemon. Now, as for the battle... It does help to know what you're going up against, so again, legendary Pokemon guides will be your friends, such as this right here. So I'm going up against Nil Ego right now, and it's really interesting that Lunala can hit it with a stab super effective psychic, but because it has such a high special defense, and it also gets the special defense boost from its like little Ultra Beast aura thing going on, I can actually kind of combo it down. I use Psychic, I use Shadow Ball, and it's gonna be a very easy pickup with the Beast Ball. Like Ultra Beast, I know that the, they don't technically count as legendary Pokemon, but the same methods still work for them. And the Beast Ball gives a five times capture rate at all times, so you don't even have to weaken it fully. You can just kind of knock it down below half, and you still have a really solid chance of catching some of the Ultra Beasts, depending on what their catch rate is. Niligo has a pretty high catch rate, so it is not challenging at all to just go out, grab this Pokemon, and then be good to go. So there's a couple of other ways that we can do. We'll talk about catch rate here in a bit. Now also what you want to do is compare your Pokemon to your expectations. Because what you can actually do is instead of having to go to the battle tree and then do an IV checker, you can check IVs on the spot. All you need to do is go to a Pokemon team builder, like I have right here, Pokemon Showdown. Set the level, make sure all of your stats line up, set the right nature, and then just kind of go and compare it. So as you can see right here, I got the hasty nature with my Abra and its synchronized ability. So that's points right there. And then also we can go and just start comparing stats. So it looks like I have 31 IVs in hit points, 0 to 1 IVs in attack, which is actually really amazing. It means attack IVs, depending on what the Pokemon's doing. If you have a special attacker, it does help to have 0 attack IVs because because it means foul play and confusion is going to be doing less damage to you so just a little bit of optimization right there I got 31 IVs in the special attack 31 IVs in the special defense and then I didn't get good IVs in defense I got a hasty nature so I don't think that matters too much and then also we do have 
okay IVs in the speed, but that's what bottle caps are for. So pretty much with the way that this legendary Pokemon breaks down, I just need to use one normal bottle cap. I don't even need a gold bottle cap to make this one work, so I would call this one a very successful catch, and you can do that on the fly, that before you go through the encounter, you just want to save beforehand and then soft reset if it goes bad. Also, if you do not get the proper nature that you want, but I got everything on the first try, so I was pretty lucky right there. If it didn't work, you just kind of do the same thing over again. Soft reset, hit it Psychic, hit it Shadow Ball, or do whatever comboing methods that you have for weakening this Pokemon, and then that'll be a pretty easy capture for you right there. So now let's go and talk about capture rates and other things that you can do. So right now, on screen you can see I have a Sneasel. Any Pokemon with False Swipe will do really well. Also having Status Pokemon, a Pokemon with Spore, Pokemon with uh, Thunder Wave, anything that can put a major status on the opposing Pokemon, even though Poison and Burn are not recommended because if you get them to low health, and then they take down to the poison or burn, then you just knocked out the Pokemon. You worked so hard to try and capture. But False Swipe, it makes it to where the opponent cannot fall below one hit points. That even if you use False Swipe on a one hit point opponent, it will stay at one hit points. So you can just kind of False Swipe down anything that you need to. It's a little rough depending on some Pokemon like Nil Ego. Well, that's a rock type Pokemon, so False Swipe is going to take a couple of extra hits. Also make sure it's like a very powerful Pokemon. My Sneasel isn't a best, isn't the best against Ultra Beast, but if you have like a level 100 False Swipe Pokemon, that can be pretty good. Um, Smeargle is also a pretty solid Pokemon. That what you can do is you can have a Pokemon use False Swipe on Smeargle. Smeargle will then sketch your False Swipe, and then you can switch in your Smeargle, so that Smeargle will use False Swipe on yours, and then you can sketch that. Therefore, you can get False Swipe into Smeargle. You can also do this with other statuses, so that means you can have like a Spore Smeargle, that you have Morello hit the Smeargle with the Spore, then have it Spore you, and then you can go and sketch that. So now you have a False Swipe Spore Smeargle, which will help out giving you the best capture rate. You give it to level 100, and then that'll be pretty good. So if you want to be like a mad efficiency machine, you can do some crazy stuff like that. It will be very beneficial official against the Tapus that they have very low catch rates and they can be rather tricky. All right, so I'm in Serbia right now to kind of go a little bit more detail on catch rates. The reason why I mentioned Spore earlier is because Sleep is going to have a pretty solid buff to catch rates, going to double that right there. Same how like Paralysis will be 1.5 times. So Thunder Wave is going to be permanent. That once you paralyze it, that Pokemon will have it. And then with Sleep, it'll be kind. It can wake up at any point, but you can still have a higher catch rate for that Pokemon. Then we can see with like Pokeballs and stuff, the catch rates can vary. So if you want to catch a Pokeball, that's going to be rather challenging. But you can also use an, uh, an Ultra Ball or another appropriate ball. Timer balls are pretty crazy that they can have up to a four catch rate depending on how long that the battle has lasted. Pokemon Sun and Moon, it runs off the formula 1 plus 0.3 times the turn number with four as its maximum. So after just 10 turns, the timer ball will be at max efficiency and it will be, be very easy to catch the Pokemon just like that. Also, repeat balls can technically work. If the Pokemon is in your Pokedex, then it's times one. If it is, then times three. So Ultra Beast, since you do get multiple attempts at catching them, you can use a repeat ball for any subsequent uh, Ultra Beast. Dust Balls, they can work. Like if it's at if it's at night, then that means you just have a better catch rate for the Pokemon right there. Actually it reminds me in Soul Silver version, I caught the level 70 Ho-Oh at night with just a Dust Ball because it was pretty eff effective and it was still at like 80% hit points or something ridiculous. The Beast Ball has 5x capture rate. The uh, Quick Ball, it was buffed to 5x. So that's some of the stuff right there. Critical Capture, that's just some RNG. If it happens and you've caught a lot of Pokemon, it's just going to make your capture a lot easier. Then let's go and talk about the legendary Pokemon that you can catch. So Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Fini. All the Tapu Pokemon, and then into the Necrozma. Necrozma will be after you catch all the Ultra Beasts. So technically this guide helps you, and then if you could just efficiently get all competitive Ultra Beasts in the first run, go for a solid Necrozma. Again, just going off of guides and stuff, that could be pretty awesome. And then Tapu Pokemon are going to be about the same, that you just synchronize the right nature, and then you go and try to capture it efficiently. That all the Tapu Pokemon will be at level 60, and Tapu Koko is interesting. You're going to have to wait until electric terrain wears off. That way you can actually put it to sleep if you are going for that. And since it's a fairy electric typing, you can't even paralyze it. So it will be one of the harder ones to status. Same with uh, some of the other ones that for Misty Terrain. Misty Terrain is going to make it to where you can't status the Pokemon until that terrain leaves as well. So just be weary of what's going on and then you can have some efficiency. Tapu Bulu as a grass type Pokemon just can't be spored in general. So that might be a Thunder Wave into False Swipe and then trying to catch it off of one of your higher catch rate Pokeballs. And then we have Necrozma, that's going to be level 75, 
It's a bit more challenging of a battle, but as a pure psychic type Pokemon, it won't be hard to just go and cut down. It does have the Stealth Rock, Iron Defense, Ring Out, and Prismatic Laser. So I think another thing you need to worry about is just if the Pokemon can heal. Aqua Ring on the Tapu Fini might be a little bit of a problem. Tapu Bulu, since it will have that grassy terrain, it will be healing early on. So you just have to kind of be aware of what the Pokemon is going to be throwing. Then we also have the Ultra Beast. Ultra Beasts will vary, vary in levels. We have 55, we have 60, we have 65, we have 65, we have 70. So depending on the Pokemon you're going up against, again, it's just going to kind of balance out like that. But with the Ultra Beasts and the Beast Balls, it's going to be pretty good. Let's look at Guzzlord. Yeah, it has a 15 capture rate. So it seems like the capture rate just gets a little more challenging every time. Because uh, Nil Ego, Nil Ego has a pretty high 45 capture rate. So that's why it was very easy to capture. But then we have 25 and then it goes down from there. But it's still not difficult. Uh, Celesteela might cause some problems because it is a steel typing. So that false swipe will be a little more tricky to go off of. But just kind of showing that there are ways of just managing this a little better. Even with that beast ball, you can get it to low. You can just try to put it to sleep, paralyze it, and then you can have a pretty effective catch. Or maybe just get lucky off of that first throw quick ball right there. And then we can also kind of compare this to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That a capture guide was probably more necessary in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire than ever. And a capture guide for legendaries now is also pretty good because with bottle caps, you can catch a legendary Pokemon. And even if it does have the best IVs, you're done. You just need to really worry about nature and depending on how many bottle caps you have, you can kind of go from there. If you don't have any bottle caps and you don't want to grind for bottle caps, then going for the right IV uh, legendary Pokemon the first time could be pretty effective because bottle caps are kind of rare. But say you randomly fished up one, well, that's where something like my Nil Ego would be very effective, that you can just bottle cap it and you'll be good to go. But now we can see right here, like in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, so many different legendary Pokemon to go and capture, even like previous generation legendaries. So with another five effective legendary Pokemon in each game to capture, this guide will be very usable and very useful for that. I think that was one, like, one of the crazy things about, you know, in other games, you're already, like, you're in the story, you don't have a lot of time to prepare, but right now this is all post-game. So I can go out, spend tons of money on Quick Balls, I have a lot of free time, the story isn't rushing me into capturing this Pokemon, and depending if you've used your Master Ball or not, or whatever kind of stance you're taking right there, you can go and mostly just catch legendary Pokemon at your leisure, and then you'll be good to go. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit of history added on top of the capture guide for legendary Pokemon, the Ultra Beast, and then understanding catch rates just a little better. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.